Now you can hear me. Hey, appreciate y'all being here. I know uh, summer is rough and folks on vacations and on the boats and fishing and all that, but I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, Sunday morning for me has always been like that big family dinner, right, or that lunch. Like you invite everybody and it's like, man, you hope everybody shows up, but if everybody doesn't show up, we're still going to eat. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I love it, man, when people are committed to this space right here, because I think it helps create an experience, man, for you to encounter God anew and afresh. Amen. Not that you can't do that on Monday uh, through Saturday, but for me personally, man, like I look at some of the experiences, man, I've had with God, and that kind of takes you to the next. Amen. Because sometimes you get a little, uh, uh, man, you get those dry seasons where it seems like God's kind of silent, right? Even though you know he's still working, but you can't like obviously see him. But those experiences, man, your encounters with God, sometimes they take you along the journey. And uh, what better place to be in the house of God and, uh, and experience God anew and afresh today? Amen. Is that your desire today? I mean, I hope it's just not, hey, I got to go to church and they better have some cinnamon rolls. Man, if they run out of coffee, I'm going to throw a fit and start flipping carts over. Uh, but I hope, it's, I hope it's your desire to encounter God, man. So when you leave here, uh, we've added value to you. God, God has spoken to you. Uh, so when you leave here, like, you're in a much better space to be able to represent him. Amen? And that's a desire, man. We get together. We get a chance to fellowship. I love catching up with you, seeing what God is doing. We get a chance to worship together. We get an opportunity to receive the word. But if you don't come prepared, if you don't come with that desire to want to grow and learn, guess what? Man, you can walk through the motions your whole life. And uh, I know that's not God's desire, and that's not any pastors here uh, at Mary and Naz's desire for you just to walk through it. Man, we want you to uh, have this beautiful collision with God over and over and over again. And I guarantee you, man, God's always got something new and fresh for you. Amen? Amen. And, and if you embrace that, if you put yourself in a lane, you put yourself in a position, man, where you want to hear from God, and you take those experiences where you're like, man, I was sitting right there, and God spoke to me, and I came up, man, I got some, pray, uh, some prayers, and people beat the sin out of me, whatever that experience looked like, and man, I can put that in my deposit of, of my journaling of what God has done in my life, and that will happen again and again and again and again if you put yourself in the arena, put yourself in a position to hear an experience from God. Amen? So I hope today you experience God. I hope that, man, when you leave here, you'll, 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 you'll feel a little bit more connected with God and man, some of the things we're going to talk about because we really want you to live um, a life of wisdom. Amen. Two of you. We, we really want you to live a life of wisdom. Uh, yes, stay with me. I like it when y'all talk, you know what I mean? It's like, like don't interrupt me while I'm, uh, but, but talk back at me. Let me know you're breathing, man. You're alive. You got a pause. Um, but God's given us the good stuff for a long time. And, and you know, there, there's something, there's always been a disconnect from the information in the word, uh, the inspired word of God and how we live. I mean, there's always a disconnect. It's not a 110% match. God has given us insight. He's given us uh, his preferred will. He's given us some really good direction. He's given us some, uh, uh, this is how you should live your life kind of moments. This is how you live a holy life, man. And I think that is the core, like that is the essence of this whole experience with God is to become more and more like Jesus, to live what we call a holy life. So you can uh, set yourself apart, man. We live a different kind of life. At times, it seemed like it's a very odd life. Amen. Man, you can't be a camouflage Christian if you are mixing in with non-believers and people that are not confessing Jesus and you blend okay with those folks and they can't tell you apart. Something is wrong. <laughs> God has set us apart, man, to be a holy people. Not that we're better than anybody else. We're walking it out. We're trying to figure it out. But God has given us a blueprint. He's given us a roadmap. And in the book of Proverbs, there's all kinds of good stuff in there, man. All kinds of... Uh, practical, uh, general principles. They're not always promises. Sometimes people are looking for formulas. I Man, if I do this, this is the end result. Uh, Proverbs is kind of like uh, eight out of ten times if you do this, this is how it's going to end. And as you look at a very unpredictable world and you're looking for a, a, a direction and insight and kind of a lane for you to live, Proverbs has all the good stuff because Solomon asked, asked God for uh, wisdom. Out of all the things he could have asked God for, he could have said, hey, God, will you make me very rich? And typically, if you have wisdom, if you have common sense, you can learn to make some money. Amen? Amen. 
Uh, remember, he didn't ask for that. He didn't say, hey, bless me with this great life. He didn't say any of that. He said, hey, help me to have the sermon. Help me to have some insight. And God honored that prayer for Solomon. And that's where we get Proverbs, man. We get some uh, in-depth, like uh, God insights, and we get some of his experiences of how he kind of uh, uh, wrote out his life and some of the do's and the don'ts. And Proverbs 1, we're, we're going to repeat this probably every, every week, but it tells us what uh, of the meaning and the purpose of Proverbs are for. And really, man, they're for uh, giving you wisdom, instructions, understanding of the Word of God, uh, and it helps you see what is right, just, and fair. Friends, we need those pictures to stay in front of us. Amen? Because we can get distracted, man. Sometimes, you know, we, we talked about last week about leaning on your own understanding. Everybody in this room, man, we can go back. We've had those moments where we tried to figure it out. Maybe we've leaned on our education. Maybe we've leaned on other insights, and it's not been really a, a, a seasoned in God. But that sometimes gets us in trouble. Amen? When we lean on our own understanding because we want to call the shots, man, we want to make sure we, we understand it. But, man, when you're leaning on God, man, it's really do, do we trust him more than we trust our own understanding. And that's going to happen a thousand times in your journey with Christ, man, if you're serious with your relationship with God. Because there's going to be a lot of things about God, guess what, you don't understand. And God doesn't give you all the information. He doesn't give you all the insight. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to walk this out in faith. And once you take that step and you trust God more than your own understanding and you give him a little bit of this and a little bit of that of your life, man, you'd be amazed at what God can do. But if you never cross that line, you'll never really experience that. So guess what? Quit playing safe with God. Oh, man, I, I want all the benefits and the blessings of knowing God, but I don't really want to cross the line. Friends, you, you will live this whole life unless you cross over that line and never really uh, fully experience God for all he has for you playing it safe. Man, you got to take a chance on God. You take a chance on everything else, man. You trust everything else. Y'all sit in those chairs today. You didn't second guess those things would not hold you. Amen? I've seen some of them collapse, y'all. I don't know, man. Some of them are not... But I wonder if we would trust God on that level to say that these insights and these general principles, I'm going to allow him to shape me and carve me and mold me into the people that he wants us to be. He wants us to be a holy people. And man, I know some of you are really, really trying to pursue that, man. You're chasing God hard, man. And God has done some amazing things. And you got some milestones and you're seeing some insights and you're really getting it, man. And you're leaning not on your own understanding, but you're leaning on God hard. And you're seeing the blessings and you're seeing the benefits and you're seeing just how God does that in such an incredible way. But sometimes there's a big connect in the information and what I know and how I live. And I got to bring that gap in a little bit closer. And you know how we do that? That's a constant life of obedience. That's a constant life of surrender. That's a constant life of submitting to God on and on and going. You mean, Pastor Greg, I don't get a break to where I get to do my own thing? No! When you say that big yes to Jesus, it's going to be followed up with a thousand other yeses. And that's going to be you carrying your cross and picking up that cross every day and surrendering your life to experience this, full, uh, this fullness in this life that God died for you to experience. And unfortunately, a lot of people say, yeah, I want that, man, give it to me. But very few people really live it because it is, at times it feels like you are denying every part of your body, every part of your life. i got to fully take the back door and allow God to have front and center in my life. And that's an every morning, every day decision you'll make for the rest of your life until you see Jesus face to face. And if you struggle with that, guess what? Today will be a perfect day for you to give it up and lean on God for that. Amen? <laughs> I haven't even got to the sermon yet, y'all, but that was just something I felt like y'all needed, need, needed to hear. Uh, so today the text is uh, Proverbs. Uh, we're looking at verses uh, 7, uh, Proverbs 1, verse 7. And y'all stand. Y'all been sitting for a little bit. Get, get comfortable on me. Uh, Proverbs. I mean, hopefully you guys have a daily diet of like Proverbs and Psalms. This is really practical, uh, practical stuff. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking for it, say hold up. If you're still looking for it, I'm sure it's on the screen, y'all. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despite wisdom and instructions. Y'all may be seated. 
Uh, it's the beginning. It, it, it's, it's the first step. It's the starting point, man. When you think about your whole experience for God, and this is what I want you to hear. This is kind of the bottom line for my sermon today. How you see and how you understand God has everything to do in how you live for God. And when you think about this whole understanding, this insight of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, of understanding, of insight. And it's not a fear. A lot of people put this in, in a wrong context of saying, oh, man, I need to like, oh, God, God's out to get me. And I know some of y'all, if you've been around the church for a length of time, the old hellfire and brimstone approach to Christianity and to God. Sometimes, man, if that got you to Jesus, that's amazing. But sometimes that doesn't keep you close to Jesus. You got to get to a place where that fear turns into love and you really pursue God with an honest heart and you're chasing after God. But but it's not a fear like, oh, God, God's going to get me. God's not up in heaven waiting for you to mess up, man, where he can just smash you, man, where he can absolutely destroy you. That's not the God that we serve. The fear of the Lord is this. It it, it is a a deep uh, reverence for God. Man, it is a very deep and a, a, man, a respect that it's, oh, it's like, oh. And I don't know when the last time you've experienced that, whether it was an uh, experience with God or just in a general setting. But, I mean, can you think about God, man, and all he is and all the things that he's done. And, man, God created everything, man. Like, he made everything that we uh, see here today. I mean, he created the earth. The stories of God go on and on. He, he, man, he parted the Red Sea just by speaking it. Started making things happen, just saying, hey, I want this, and boom, 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 it happened. And so the fear of, of, of the Lord is, it's, it's an amazement, man. It's like, uh, it's, it's so big, man. God is so holy. He's so, it's like, whoo. And unfortunately, man, we live in a culture, we live in a day and an age where nothing is sacred. Amen? Where they've taken away everything that's holy because when you try to remove God from everything, nothing makes sense. You make up your own truth, you make it up as you go, uh, and there's no absolute, so therefore there's nothing holy because there's no holy God to consider in the narrative. But for those that are the people of God, when we recognize, when we get our understanding right, and we look at the scriptures and maybe our own experience, the uh, uh, the fear of the Lord and is to reverence him in such a deep way. Ah, man. I can't can't wrap my brain around it. I can't fully understand it, man, but I know it's big. Man, I know he's powerful. I know he's amazing. I know it's... ah, And when he shows up, whether it's in a service like this or he showed up in your life and he's performed those miracles and he's done the impossible over and over again and he made a way where there was no way over and over again, it's a constant reminder for us to see how big and how amazing God is. You can't put God in a box. God is not some weak, frail person. He's all-powerful. He's almighty. Man, we're singing songs, man. We come up here on Sunday morning. You know what? That that is practice for when we get to see him face to face, when we get to heaven. And y'all better start learning the songs. (laughs) You're going to get up there, and man, that whole experience of, of, and I know a lot of people have a really creative imagination of what they think about God, but when you look at the scriptures and you look at the insights and you look at some of the experience, man, when you see God face to face, you'll be lucky to talk. It's going to be, whoo. oh, man. It's not, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I don't want to mess up because I don't want you to put, it's, it's not that. It, it, it's a reverence. It's, a, it's me understanding that, that, that God is so big and so amazing, friends. And once we get that concept, once we get that understanding, when we realize that, that God is one that we should reverence and have reverence for and show respect and show honor on a much different level. Friends, and that sets us up for what we call discipleship. That sets us up for this ongoing experience with God. But if we have a warped understanding and and how we see God is kind of frail and kind of off-centered a little bit, that God's out to get me, and if I mess up, God's going to punish me. There is punishment. There there is a wage for sin. Amen? I don't want to paint that picture where you can just live your life any old way and there's no consequence. There's absolutely consequence for how you live. And when you see God from that angle of like, oh, man, God is so, so amazing. 
God is so big. And the scripture gives us these little pictures of how that's happened throughout history. And can you imagine how when you approach God uh, in times of prayer with the thought of who, who you're really talking to? Amen? And I know some people try to down it down. It's like, God's your buddy and God's your friend and all that. I can't approach God on that level. I got to approach him as, woo! And who am I talking to? I'm talking to uh, man, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the one who created everything and, and the one who's given me life and the one who's, who's made all this possible. And I better talk to God like I got a little bit of sense. That's what my mom used to say. You know, when somebody walks in, it's like, hey, you better act like you got a little bit of sense. With I tried my best. I don't know if I impressed anybody. But you get that understanding. You, you get that picture of who God is. Man, it's a game changer on how you see and how you live for God. And I can't share it, man. I can't articulate it in words today. It's just, a, it's just an ongoing understanding of, of, of who God is. And that is the starting point. That's where it all begins. Because if you reject that, if you have a warp concept, the biblical uh, person is called a fool, the person that rejects correction and wisdom and insight and all the things that continues to help us to become a disciple of God. You know what a disciple of God is? We're, we're learners of God. We're constantly learning about God. You know why? Because God is so big. <laughs> you can't get him in a six-week class, y'all. I don't know how many times you read your Bible. Keep reading it through because guess what? He's going to continue to unveil himself in so many different ways. He's too big to be understood in a couple settings. And when we think about that, it's a game changer on how we approach God in prayer how we approach God in worship, how we approach God and how we live our life, the fact that God is, whoo, and I should live my life in such a way that I'm absolutely blown away by God. God will blow the socks off every time. And we get comfortable with God. And we see that in a story in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles where, where Uzzah, uh, they were bringing in the Ark of the Covenant. And there's some very specific instructions on how that Ark was supposed to be handled. You know what? God is a God of uh, very, very structured. He's very detailed. And, and he just doesn't like off the cuff. And they were bringing that in and the ox kind of lost his footing and it slipped off in an irreverent act. He touched it. Died right there on the spot. You talk about getting people's attention, y'all. I wonder sometimes, I wonder what's going to get the church's attention? What, what's going to bring us back to a place where we have that, that, that reverence and that healthy fear of God where we're like, oh, man, we, we have to understand who we're, who we're serving. Because honestly, I feel like sometimes, man, we lose that because we get too comfortable with God. Oh, God, God will... You know, overlook that. You know, God can never go against his word. You know that? If God says it, he can't, he can't lie. He can't change it. He can't go against it. It's God's spoken word. And if God says it, he's got to stay true to what he said. That's why we got to understand. We got to know what he said. And we look at Proverbs and all the things that it begins to tell us and all the insights. And, and, and this is Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's, just, it's, it's my understanding of God. And he, he's a God. Ooh. He's amazing. <laughs> he's big. I can't fully grab, but man, I know. I can't put God in the box. I want to understand him. I want to put a face on him. I got the tattoo. No, that doesn't work with God. He's much bigger than that. And when we get our understanding on that, it sets us up to where we can constantly receive the wisdom and the instruction all through God's Word. Y'all with me today? From Genesis to Revelation, that's a constant instruction. That's a constant uh, reminder. That's a constant shaping of what God wants us to be over and over and over again. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, Ananias and Sapphira's. 
Y'all know about that story. I think we ought to share this story right before we take the offering every week. Because this is one where somebody was holding back on God, and God caught them in a lie. And maybe they got a little bit comfortable, and maybe they forgot who they were dealing with. One, you know what? God knows everything about you. There's no hiding with God. Running from God, trying to conceal. Guess what? God already knows the best thing you can do is put that out in the light and allow God to deal with because you're not hiding anything from God. And they held out on God, and boom, one dropped dead. Uh Uh-oh. And then the other one got a second chance. Maybe they didn't know what just happened, but it's like I have an opportunity to confess and be straight up with God and, and, and bring it all in. It's 110% of who you are. This was dealing with an offering, obviously, but it's like, uh-oh, you repeated the same thing. You lied about it. Boom, gone. It's a great reminder of the fear of the Lord, the awe of God, and the reverence of God, the respect of knowing who are we dealing with. I know within the life of the church, man, there's been a lot of attempts to try to protect that reverence and, you know, a lot of different things, and sometimes it turns into legalism. But I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, it was all just to remind us of how big God is. Don't run in church. Don't wear your hat in the sanctuary. All these things that sometimes we played out within the life of the church, I think it was all just to keep us focused, of saying, hey, you, man, you need to remember. Don't be talking during worship. You need to focus. Because of who you're standing in front of. Because of what you're entering into. Oh, man, I wish I, I wish I had the words to paint a better picture, but it's a reminder of just, this is where it begins. On your, your, your understanding of how you see God it is the first step and the starting point of how your whole journey with God is going to play out. And if you take that concept and you take that understanding that, man, God is amazing, he is big, he, he, he's just more than I can process and handle as you approach God and you receive the word and you receive the instructions, it's going to continue to shape you and mold you over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. A feeling and that attitude of deep respect, that, that love, and that something, something is sacred, and that's God. You know what? I think this, I think the people of God, I think the church, you know what? I think we're holding the line for what is sacred in our world today. I think we're the ones who are holding up to say, hey, this is what is holy. Like, this is what God created. This is still what is good. And the church needs to be empowered. The church needs to have the confidence. The church needs to have the boldness to stand for what God tells us we need to stand for. Because if we back down and we take 20 steps back and we just let everybody uh, and have their own understanding of who they think God is, but no, God has given us some really good pictures of one, it starts with how we seem. And how we seem and how we understand has everything to do with how we're going to approach him and how we're going to live our life. Man, it's pretty amazing, y'all. To, to fear God is not, not to be afraid, but it's to stand. It's to stand in all of him. And knowing how, how big he is. It, it's the right thinking. It's the right understanding of who God is. Y'all still with me today? Yes. And looking at all the things that God has done over, over the years for us. It's a starting point. It's, it's, getting, it's getting the right mindset. And it's helping us to, to launch into this whole lifestyle of, of wisdom and instructions and understanding. And those who have a warped concept of God and see God from a different angle, anything than what he tells us, he calls them a fool. The biblical definition of a fool is one who despites, despises God and rejects God. And rejects the wisdom and the counsel of God. How many people y'all know fit in that category? Don't look around. Our world is full of them. Because they, they don't have that understanding of God, that, that healthy fear, that healthy understanding of who God is. And a lot of people have this approach and they have this attitude of not, hey, I should reverence God, I should respect God, but they have the attitude, of, it's my life and I can do whatever I want to do and I want to call the shots. 
And I think, honestly, that's where a lot of people, man, really have a hard time with Christianity because you know what, man, if you want to call the shots, it's very hard to serve God. You can't have it your way and God's way. There's got to be a great divide. There's got to be a the party. There's got to be an exchange. You've got to get to a place where, where you die to self, you bow down, you pick up your cross daily, and you give it to God over and over and over again. And you receive that instruction, you receive that insight, and God continues to work that out. God continues to do I mean, that amazing stuff in his life over and over and over again. Y'all still with me today? Uh, fools, yeah. Little, little kids say amen, amen. Uh, fools despite, despise instruction and wisdom. They reject the things of God. They don't see things uh, of, of God. They see things that are ungodly. Man, they become stubborn in their attitudes towards God. So a couple things I want us to look at today. You know, it was, uh, I, th- I think, Solomon's desire when, when he shared this, especially for uh, the people of Israel, uh, for people to have an understanding uh, of what holy living really looked like. Now, God's people have always been called to a different kind of life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I think this is the beginning of how all that kind of plays out. So to have the right relationship with God is obviously the first step. The fear of, fear of God is very, very important. And maybe you were taught wrong. Maybe you've seen some bad images of God and it kind of warped your understanding and maybe you had somebody uh, give you some information that wasn't maybe biblical or insightful and it shaped a very disturbing picture of who God is. You know, when you mention the name of God and you mention the name of the Father, sometimes, man, that hits people in a lot of different angles. Amen? Jim Simula, the pastor, used to be pastor of Brooklyn Tabernacle, when he first got there, uh, as he was preaching and as he was sharing, he would always reference the Holy Father. And you got to understand that this community that they were ministering to, that they were a, a broken people that came from a lot of different backgrounds. And some of those backgrounds were people that had been abused by their father. So when he heard the word Heavenly Father for a lot of people, that was like, oh man, if that's anything related to my earthly father, I don't want anything to do with that. And it twisted and it gave him a very warped concept of a loving father. And they begin to live their life with that kind of understanding of God. Of, hey, man, if I mess up, God, God's going to get me. God's just waiting for me to take a wrong turn, and he's going to smack me down. But you know what? If that was the case, man, grace would not be a part of our journey with God. The times when we mess up, the times we miss it, the times when we fall short, guess what? God is gracious, and as God's people, guess what? We should be very gracious to other people because we've experienced grace over and over and over again. When we have a good understanding of who God is and and we're in a right relationship and we fear the Lord, man, it helps everything uh, stay in perspective. Man, the continuation of discipleship, the beginning of knowledge, the understanding of, uh, of who God is, the wisdom and the discipleship, it begins to shape us, and that makes us into the followers, followers of God that we become. So we don't have a right understanding with God. We can't receive the information. We can't receive the instruction. We can't receive the word, and it never really shapes us. We never really become who God wants us to be. And we get stuck somewhere in the middle, and God's saying, hey, it always starts with this. you got to have a good understanding. you got to fear, fear me. you got to have the reverence. you got to have the respect. you got to have the understanding of who I am. And then everything I else uh, tell you is going to shape you. It's going to mold you. And eventually, you will become what we call a holy person. You will become a greater reflection of Jesus Christ. You will uh, represent Jesus and be an ambassador of Christ in the way that he always designed that to happen because you're constantly receiving and that information and that wisdom and that instruction constantly shapes you over and over and over and over again. Amen? But if I get stuck somewhere in the middle because I have a a warped understanding of God and I don't see God for who he is and I don't have that reverence and respect for him, man, I'll never get to that place where God really wants me to land in the end. I do good for a while and I get hung up, but this ongoing discipleship, this ongoing uh, uh, carving, this ongoing learning about God, uh, man, is is a long journey, y'all. Be be patient with yourself. 
and be patient with other people. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been in this setting. It doesn't matter how many years you've said that big yes to Jesus. Sometimes the overall effect, sometimes the carving and the shaping of that, it takes a lifetime to get there. There's no quick fixes with God. There's no 30-day program. Hey, you do all this. Man, you're going to be the spitting image of Jesus. It's in for the long haul. And he shapes you and he molds you and you're obedient and you surrender and you continue to see the insight and you allow the Holy Spirit to convict you and correct you and you bow into that, man, and you surrender to that and you continue to give your all to God. And that's how this whole thing works. And it never stops. Just when you think you've arrived, booyah, God's got something else for you. Just when you think you've absolutely surrendered everything at the altar and you place it for God, God's going to say, what about that? And then you start making deals with God. Hey, God, I've given you all this. Can I just have this one? He said, nope, that one might be the hinge that, 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 that stops you from becoming exactly what I want you to be. Give it up to And when I understand that, when I allow that to shape me and carve me and continue to help me to become who he wants me to be, and I see that he's a good God and he has the best intentions for me, it makes it easier for me to bow in and to lean in on that. Amen? I don't see him as a fearful God. I see him as a God. Like, man, he really wants to use me. He really wants to do this in my life. Best thing, man, if you really want wisdom, the best thing you can do today is bow down and surrender to God. And that's the greatest insight you can take away from the day is give it up. Surrender to God. That respect and that divine guidance is part of this Christian journey, man. I think we constantly, constantly lean into that. And only a fool despises that wisdom and that instructions. I'm going to try not to look at anybody when I say this, Okay. Have you ever talked to somebody about God? And we have to be mindful. Before we have this conversation, God has been working on that person probably for a very long time, especially if somebody's been on our radar and we've been praying for them and we've been trying to witness to them, and that's just part of the deal, amen? And then we finally get a conversation with them. It's like, I'm going to share about God. Man, and sometimes we have our arsenal of scriptures. We're like, man, God, you open up that door. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to give it to them. The Roman road, here it comes. Both barrels. And you're sharing that and you're trying to help them see picture and you're looking in their eyes and you're like, this is not. It's like a, a deer and it's like the headlights just hit the deer, right? It's like this person has absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Man, and they reject that. You've been praying about it. Man, you give them the best insights of God you can give. You've even shared your testimony how God has been faithful and how he's done a good work in your life and how he found you and where you're at now and all the good stuff. And you look at them, and instead of embracing that for them to enter into a relationship with God, they reject it. That is the picture of a fool, y'all. And you begin to see their understanding of God. And it's not that they are rejecting you, but they're rejecting God because of their understanding of who God is. And I don't know how many stories and how many people I've heard uh, in my life and over the course of 20 plus years of ministry of people that don't want a relationship with God because somebody has painted a bad picture of who God is to them. They were too hard on them. Legalism. Begin to shape and mold them, friends. But I want to tell you today, Proverbs 1 helps us put that in perspective. Man, if we can stay true, and for us in this room today, we have to have a healthy concept of who God is, and we have to start with the fear of the Lord, the all of God. I don't know how that switch turns on for you. I wish I could turn it on for you today. Amen? I wish I could help you understand that for, for, for really what it is. But friends, this is what I want to tell you today. You know, for us living in our 24, 2024 kind of life, team, when you come on up, you know, our imagination and sometimes our uh, illusions fall in our relationship with God. 
You know, sometimes if we're honest, man, we create our own God based on our own likings and our own not likings. And begins to shape God and, you know, it's a little bit of this. and God operates like this and all that. You know what? There's going to be a time when we think about that overall reverence. We think about that deep respect for God. You know what? For some people in this room today, you may not get there until you see God face to face. The Bible tells me that every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. And confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That, that's everybody who's ever been birthed before in this world. That's the promise of God. Everybody's going to get to see God. Woo, that's amazing. And also very terrifying if you're not in a right relationship with God. And, and I've heard people, you know, try to explain that. Man, when I see God, I'm going to ask him this question. You ain't going to ask him nothing. Because what I talked about today and these pictures of God that we've seen, guess what? Then, then it becomes a real reality. It's not an illusion. It, 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 it's, it's not a make-believe. It's not a far-off thought, but it's a reality, man. You, you are face-to-face -face with God. The creator of everything, heaven and earth. Yeah. <laughs> and in your ongoing submission, you will confess once again, hey, he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is God! Or in your overall fear, for real fear, of knowing that you rejected the wisdom and the instructions in that ongoing discipleship journey that God had for you and you stand before God condemned. Whew, that's going to be a different feel right there, friends. I don't know what, what convinces you or what will convince you outside. I'm very confident in the power of the Holy Spirit. I, I'm very, very, very uh, uh, secure, and I'm often reminded that the Holy Spirit is still working today in 2024. Amen? He's still convicting people. He's still giving insights. He's still letting people see. He's giving them that, that honest measurement stick of where they're at with him. And I pray today, if the Holy Spirit captured your heart, and maybe you need to unlearn some things and you need to learn some new things, and maybe, maybe today the best, best response is, hey, man, you just need to bow down before God. I ain't doing that in church, man, because people are going to talk about Guess what? If you can't do it in church, you'll never be able to do it out there. And why not? Wouldn't the day be a great day to practice and be reminded of how big and how amazing and how in all we should be of God? I, I think today would be a perfect day to go back to that. Man, to allow God to, to, to just give you a refresher course today. Of, hey, don't, don't try to cage me. <laughs> don't try to put me in a box. I'm not your buddy. I'm not your little friend. I'm God. I should be in all of that. Whew. Man, so I wonder today, man, how does that mess with you? The fact that, man, when you lean into God, it's like. Whew. How does that remind you of how you live your life? The fact that. God, God is a holy, he is a just, and he's a fair God, and he sees every part of my life. And how I understand God and how I see God has everything to do on how I live my life. And if I see God as this huge being that I can't even, in this little mind of mine, really understand, and the only understanding I have is the word that he's given me to help shape that a little bit. But I've seen God work a thousand times. Over and over and over again. And I've seen God do amazing things, just not in the scriptures, but in real life, y'all. I've seen God do miracles in your life. I know God's, God's helped me do mighty, mighty miracles. But guess what? The first step for you today, and maybe it's one of those things, man, I've been a Christian for 25 years, 30 years. Guess what? Maybe you missed a step. Maybe the starting point is, is getting a real healthy fear of God. Not fear like, oh, God's going to get me, but the awe. Here he is. He's amazing. He's big. He'll blow your socks off. 
So I wonder today, as you lean into that and you listen to that small, still voice of the Holy Spirit, and he will speak to you, I wonder what he's going to call you to. I wonder what he's going to challenge you to do. I wonder what that looks like you moving forward when you get up out of here today. Amen. Will you all stand? We'll have some pastors here around the altar, you know, pray with you and maybe talk you through that a little bit. But today, I want you to give some room for God. I want you to go back to that place, man, where you see God for his rightful place. Of a God just so amazing, so big, and deserves nothing but all of your respect and all of your honor. And that's the beginning, friends, where we continue to carry out this journey with God. I wonder how you're going to lean in today.